Today we're going to be dealing with uh, learning how to deal with a needle and a syringe. So, go ahead. And keep in mind, opening the needle and or the syringe package need not be sterile for routine injections. That is, you can force them through the paper or plastic side wrapping rather than reversibly undoing the packaging from the top. You can do that, but quicker, because it like, takes time to futz with this and you're okay. You can just do that and it comes right out. Okay. And for a syringe with a void lock, when placing a needle on the syringe, be sure that first the cap is snapped tightly on the needle because sometimes they come loose from the manufacturer. Okay, again, again here, just uh, this you can pull or again, I just frequently do that if I don't need a sterile technique. And this is firmly on, so that's good, but sometimes, you, you know, you have to put it on. Okay. And when you uncap the needle, Make sure you grab the body of the syringe with your left hand. Okay, so first of all, you twist you twist this on, okay? Um, if the cap is not on tightly, when I go to twist it, it doesn't twist effectively. But if you hear a snap, uh-oh, let's try that again, the snap, okay, that means it's in and now I can twist on and twist off. Uh, it's really more important if, there, if this is loosely on and I try to twist it off, it doesn't twist so well. I have to snap and then the, the, the cap is closer to the base of the needle and you have better torque and it twists off. Okay, so I'm, I'm removing the cap, he said. So grab the cap of the needle with the right index and thumb. This is the right index and thumb. Be sure the right index thumb point in the direction of the needle. So that is to say that they're pointing in the direction of the needle. I'm not, I don't have it that way. And go ahead. The right palm should be touching the dorsal aspects of the left fingers. Uncap by extending the right thumb index without displacing the right palm. So, okay, so here's a couple of things. First of all, doing it the right way, I, I just let it open and now it just comes off without force, okay? Some people with, will, will not have this attachment here and they'll just go like that. And when they go like that, um, it's an uncontrolled motion and my hand can get cut, okay? That's number one. Number two, some people, they open. And what happens is in order for my arm not to, you know, hit someone, uh, I immediately stop it and go back and so frequently people uncap it and punk and they puncture themselves and that's especially if this gets stuck so the the way you want to do it is just attach here and only these two fingers are moving and it opens okay so the cap should pop off with a click and at this point the cap should still be covering the needle you can then allow your two hands to separate and effortlessly remove the cap with your right hand when recapping a needle, often when drawing up medicine, a large bore needle is used to draw and a small bore needle is used to inject. Okay, so for example, and I'll, I'll, just, I'll just do this. Um, this is a larger bore needle. And I'm going to uncap there. Okay. And I, I clean the top of the medication. And drawing up medicine is a whole other... It's a whole other exercise, so we'll do that in a separate video, but just so that we have. But I drew up medicine with a large bore, and maybe I want to inject it with a small bore. Okay, so go ahead. So when recapping a needle, ideally it should be done without holding the cap in your fingers. So ideally, especially if this is contaminated, you leave it on the tray, and then now you can snap it into place. Honestly, in, 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 in practicality, if this is a clean needle, I just do the reverse motion of the other thing and I try to keep my fingers out of the way, make sure it's in, and then do that. The whole point is just not to rush. If you rush and you think it's in but it's not, you stick yourself. If you're real careful that it's on, you know, you've done the important slow part, now you can move quickly again. Okay? So make sure you only handle the cap and the needle when the cap is at least halfway on. So uh, in, the, in, the, in terms of, let's say, this was injected into someone, uh, um, if it was injected into someone, you actually activate the safety mechanism and dispose of the needle. But if for some reason you absolutely have to recap, it's at least halfway on, and then I start touching it. I don't start, I don't start futzing it with it here because this can still slip and stick me.
When removing a needle, only after the cap is placed on the needle should you use your fingers to snap the cap firmly on the needle. Correct. Unscrewing the needle when the cap is not snapped on can result in the caps unexpectedly coming off and result in the needle stick. So, yeah, here, for example, I don't know. You can imagine a situation where if, if, if this isn't on wholly and I'm twisting and it's not coming off because it's not grabbing, okay, that this cap can twist off somehow because if I force it, it twists off and somehow I can cut myself. It happens occasionally. So keep in mind if the needle does not come off readily, discard the syringe, medicine, and attach needle and start over. Yeah, so if I'm sitting there and I'm, it's not coming off and I'm just, you know, instead of really, you, you, at some point you have to say, you know what, okay, put it down. I'm not going to, nothing in medicine should be forced, certainly none of the equipment. So if something gets deformed or whatever, you just toss the whole thing and you start over. For activating the syringe safety method. Some syringes come with a safety barrel that slides up over the needle. And so this one does. Okay. In this case, hold the safety. base of the syringe with the left hand. Okay, this is my left hand. Okay. Place your right palm over the dorsal left finger. Same like... Ah! Okay, you yeah, left... Okay. So, so now we're activating the safety mechanism of the syringe. It's going to be very similar to um, taking a cap off. When we took the cap off, um, my hands, my the left... Uh, my right palm was on the back of my left fingers and I just took the cap off. Here, um, my, uh, it's just that my fingers are lower down. My, my left thumb and index grab the, the, the base of the syringe here and my, hand, my, palm, my right palm is on the back of my left and again, my fingers, my, my hand doesn't separate. My fingers just move and slide the thing up. And the idea is that the left thumb index is pulling the base secure while this is moving the um, syringe up. So let's dictate. So only the barrel will be displaced. And repeat this motion until the barrel completely covers the needle. Exactly, because uh, what happens if you, if you let the, if you, and I'm going to have this capped for my safety, if you, uh, let's say some people accidentally grab the barrel, so of course it's not going to move, and you're pulling and your hand slips, all of a sudden you can cut yourself. You saw how you can cut yourself there. So you want to make sure that only this moves, because if it's not moving, great, nothing happens, but at least I don't slice myself. So then I move it up. Okay. So now we'll move on to deactivating the syringe safety mechanism. So sometimes um, you've injected some medicine, you put the thing down, and you need to um, inject more medicine. Okay. Frequently, if you don't use all the medicine in the syringe, you may want to use it later. Activate the safety mechanism and only place the safe syringe on the procedure tray. Right. So when, that we did that. When deactivating the safety mechanism, hold the base of the syringe in your left hand. Place your right palm over the dorsal left fingers. Grab the base of the safety barrel with your right thumb and index and flex them, pulling the barrel downward, thereby exposing the needle. Okay. And this would be uncapped, obviously. So here, we. this is the safety. I put the thing, I get grab the base, and now I'm safely with the needle again. And then I do whatever I have to do. So now we'll move on to getting bubbles out of the syringe. With the cap firmly on the needle, and with the needle pointing to the ceiling, hold the syringe base between the left index and thumb, then flip the needle with your right index finger until oh. bubbles go toward the ceiling. Okay, so you see there's a bubble here at the base. And this cap is on very firmly, okay, if the, um, and I'm going to grab this, and I'm going to flick, and now the bubble came up. Okay, now if the cap were loosely on and I flicked, it comes off. So obviously the cap has to be firmly on, okay? At this point, undo the cap, but keep it over the needle. So now I'm going to undo the cap, it's loosely on, I'm not totally off, it's just loosely on, okay? Eject the air. And note, some liquid will come out as well. So now I'm going to eject air, all the air out, and some liquid is going to come out, and it comes out, and you can zoom in there, uh, it's coming out in the tip of the, in the cap. Sometimes, if you did this while, while the needle is off, okay, and you got air out, and I go like this, it spritzes out, and that can splash into somebody's eye. So you want to always let, it, let the excess spritz out into the cap, and then take the cap off. If the cap is on tight, Liquid and air 
may not express right readily. So yeah, if, if the cap is on with the click, I mean, stuff will still come out, but you know what happens is you fill up this volume with liquid and then it may not come out as good. Okay. And if you're getting air out of a used needle, point it away from yours and anyone else's eyes. Sure, so even if the cap is on, I still point it away from people's eyes, not towards me, obviously. That's common sense. And if possible, recap without touching the needle. Right. If bubbles remain in the syringe while you're injecting, it is typically not a dangerous thing in terms of injecting a small amount of air into the skin or muscle. However, most injections are done with the needle pointing towards the floor such that the bubbles move to the plunger's side. This puts pressure on the liquid coming out of the syringe such that after you finish pressing on the plunger to inject material, an additional few drops will continue to regress from the needle. Okay, so check it out, especially when you're dealing with Botox, okay? If I have air in the syringe and I let the air go to the top so only liquid is going out, Look at the drop that's going to come out, okay? Uh, I, I press on the syringe and water still keeps on coming out. Hold on, I'm pushing on it and see how there's a couple of extra drops that keep on coming out. If I have the air out, and I should do this properly, okay, I put... Now when I in, in, take water out, it completely stops. So there's no air bubble that's pushing extra water out. This is especially important for things like Botox where every drop costs like a few dollars. Okay? All right, that's it. Okay, that's it. The end.